Welcome back to Wavelength. We like to present, of course, your favorite rock videos on this program, but we also, from time to time, like to showcase lesser-known groups, and that's what we're going to do right now. This is a band called X, and uh, they're critically renowned, but not getting a lot of action in the record stores yet. Great reviews. They're produced by X Doors keyboardist Ray Manzarek. And they seem to have adopted some of that Doors flavor. Well, the Wavelength crew was in Los Angeles recently and talked to members of X about their influences and uh, their feelings about their music. And here's what they had to say. I mean, my generation is in between the hippies and the kind of glitter days, you know, which I wasn't really, I didn't really find anything good about the glitter music. Once right. you listen to a David Bowie record, saw a picture of the uh, New York Dolls, and listen to a Brian Ferry song, then you had the idea of what that generation's music was about. Right. I didn't find any of that interesting, so... Then when I met um, Billy and John, there wasn't much music happening that was new, but they were, you know, they had all the old George Jones, Hank Williams, Smokey Robinson, Rockabilly, Little Richard, Chuck Berry, all those records. Then once I heard those and found out what kind of music they liked, and we started playing, then... I think I realized, you know, what music was about. Right. We have political songs, but we haven't, like, accused Ronald Reagan of personally screwing up our lives because I think when you're a kid, he you... Invited. He wasn't invited. When, when you're a kid, you think that, that Ronald Reagan is the president, therefore he is the man that makes these laws and things happen that are bad, which everybody knows is... Yeah. Hogwash. I mean, if he was that, I mean, who, first of all, that's saying something about believing he's smart to begin with. I don't believe he's real. Right, <laughs> I, I don't mean, like, he's a living person. I think that when he was on General Electric Theater, he made some kind of deal with General Electric and they made an electric body for him. <laughs> and, he died. and he's just this kind of puppet that, you know. <laughs> I mean, that's the problem in this country, is that the underground is no longer really underground. Saturday Night Live is underground, but they're conservative. And uh, what is underground is so far underground that nobody can hear about it except in a major city. And then it becomes a click rather than something actually bubbling and, and moving. Well, you have gotten into video. Well, we're not, we're not into it, but we made some. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. We're not into a movie made some. Did you have, were you involved in the producing of it or did you, were you told what to do? Or? No, we weren't told we what to do. Yeah. Ray Manzarek produced it, or directed it rather. And uh, Electra gave us some money for it and we just did it because it's the thing to do now, <clears throat> unfortunately. It really puts certain bands at a disadvantage because a lot of bands especially like the English bands seem to have a bigger budget and it's more popular over there I mean the production aspect of it and so you get a band like us or maybe a band like the Blasters, a band that doesn't have a very big budget they've got to go out and make a video because it's it's just the only way to get exposure you know which is good that at least there's that and you've got to try to compete against the you know the quality in the Durand, production Durand and the to India to make and just the amount of time, I and mean, we only had two days to do two videos with Ray, so we did them like a live setup, and just used the best filming and the best, most creative shots and stuff, but just did it basically like a live thing, so that um, we could make the most use of our money. And, 